Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church in Abilene, Texas. Today we are continuing our study of I Citizen, Better Citizenship in Two Kingdoms. I Citizen is a part of the large series called I Christian, in which I have made many mini series to talk about biblical Christian life. And till now we have made these. I believe, I confess, I pray, I worship, I fellowship, I give, I baptize, I Eucharist, I study, I obey, I witness, I disciple, I member, I serve. And now we are doing I citizen. And uh, citizenship is being a member of a city or in Greek polis and which means it's a place uh, where people gather together to live as a community. It has both a room for individuals as well as a collective personality. Okay. Good citizenship in American culture can be seen in, the, in one of the most popular films called It's a Wonderful Life. So, according to Frank Capra, uh, Capra the, uh, the director, and uh, in that movie, it, honorable citizens serve with excellence. They unite people, and uh, they, uh, they are righteous. They are trying to do social justice, and uh, um, it's understandable for them to be imperfect. And, um, but the greatest excitement is to... Um, well, leave your work and go spend money to see a multicultural world. So that was the American idea of a good citizen. The biblical concept of a citizenship, on the other hand, um, is uh, um, looking at it from two senses, a top-down uh, and a bottom-up, a spiritual citizenship in the kingdom of God as well as human citizenship in a community of men. The idea of citizenship started before there was even Israel. Okay? It was uh, uh, an idea that started from, well, the son of, um, of Adam, from uh, Cain. He was the builder of the first city. Okay? Uh, it was called Enoch. It was probably the city, ancient city of Erech in uh, today's Iraq. And later, after the uh, the the uh, Tower of Babel and people were divided, so cities became states and the citizenship became uh, membership of a state or uh, or a nation. Okay, and uh, later empires and in modern time um, nation states. But for believers of God, we also have a dual citizenship in the kingdom of God and the, the kingdom of man. Okay? And uh, the biblical concept of citizenship, there is a theological dimension and there is a social dimension. Okay? And uh, the theological dimension is the relationship to man, uh, to, to God, and social dimension is the relationship to man. And uh, uh, the, the horizontal side has been shared by people of all cultures. And we always know that membership in a city or kingdom or nation can be obtained by birth, legal grant, or monetary purchase, or sometimes semi-membership, like resident aliens, uh, or in modern America, green cards. Okay. So those are um, the shared horizontal relationship okay, about uh, uh, citizenship. But in the biblical concept of citizenship, we have these key elements okay, of city and kingdom. And the, first of all, a city or a kingdom needs to own land, and it also needs to have people. Okay? And uh, it also worship a god, and this god uh, has a certain um, personal attributes which determines the city or the kingdom's culture or tradition. Okay, so land, people, God or gods, and culture, tradition. So that's the four 
elements. And when there are conflicts between cities or kingdoms, then there were wars. Okay, wars began from the first century. Uh, well, uh, right after the division of the um, uh, of the nations, so first century after uh, the Tower of Babel, and I think that was the uh, 20th century BC. And uh, um, at that time, if there were conflicts. Okay, and the victor will own and even replace the land, the people, the gods, which at that time means the images or vessels of service, and then even replace the culture. For example, I think the first world war, if you may say that, that was uh, uh, the one recorded in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 14. You know, right after the Tower of Babel, nations were divided, and from among the nations at that time, 70 names were recorded in Genesis 10. So when we say 70, it's a representation of uh, the nations or Gentiles in the scripture. And uh, um, Abraham was one of the eyewitnesses of the Tower of Babel. And uh, according to my understanding or the Jewish tradition, the Tower of Babel or the division of nation or the confusion of languages happened in the last year of Peleg, which according to my calculation, it was 1899 BC. And uh, Abraham was called to come out of war uh, when he was 70 years old. And that was 1876 BC. So he was, you know, around that time. And uh, he, um, came to the, he followed God's call, he came out of war, and then actually following his dad, uh, Terah, who was actually the leader of that exodus from war. But since Terah was an idol maker, he um, went to the city of, um, of Haran, and he settled there because Haran was a worship center for the moon god. So Terah stayed there to make idols, and, uh, and make a living. And Abraham left Terah by himself. Five years later, at the age of 75, he entered the nation, uh, the, the land of Canaan. At that time, there were already Canaanites who lived before him. So he came, they came here just about oh, 25 years, two decades before him, but they already claimed the land. Okay. And uh, he came here, he was a foreigner. And uh, um, uh, at that time, there were five kings of Canaan led by the king of Sodom, okay, Sodom, Gomorrah, etc. There were five kings, and they lived at a crossroads, and uh, and they became rich because they could, you know, treat the travelers and uh, and collect tax for the commerce, etc. They, they became rich. At first, they were, uh, they were the vassals of the. Uh, a group of city-states in the origin of um, um, of civilization in Mesopotamia, you know, because of uh, um, the the uh, the Ark of Noah was uh, it landed in um, well upper stream uh, Mesopotamia, uh, probably today's Turkey, Mount of Ararat, and uh, the the second Noah who was. Uh, as the second Adam was Noah. He came down and uh, led people to come to Mesopotamia, and there that's when people multiply again into millions of people. And God commanded them to disband, to um, to ex uh, expand, to fill the earth. But under the leadership of one bad person, whose name was Nimrod, they decided the human beings at that time decided to. Um, to build a tower, it's called Tower of Babel. They say, "Remember our name," and uh, we so we don't uh, expand. Well, um, they refused to obey God's word, so God came down and uh, uh, confused people's language. And then when they wake up one day, suddenly they they are speaking blah 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 to each other, and they couldn't stay together, so they disbanded. And uh, uh, that's you know how God is. Get his will done, and you no know, people used to speak one language, and I believe it, I believe it was close to um, Semitic languages, probably something called Proto-Semitic today, um, and that they are close to Hebrew and Arabic. And uh, after the the confusion, the uh, Abraham 
didn't confuse. He had his original language, and later it gradually formed the language of Hebrews. And from his descendants, one of them uh, uh, was, uh, um, uh, he became the, 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 descent, uh, the ancestor of the Arabs. Okay? And, uh, and therefore, Arabic is a Semitic language. And uh, other people's language got confused. Okay, and uh, the the leaders of the humanity at that time they were called the black-headed people, and they're probably of Hamitic origin, and uh, they invented a man-made language that's called Sumerian. Okay, and uh, there were Sumerian uh, literatures at that time. They trying to record down what they remembered and uh, uh, with its twists and so on. And, and uh, but Sumerian existed for a very short time and then they just disappeared. But the way of writing from them, that's a cuneic form that existed, but it, they were used to write other Semitic languages like Akkadian, okay, which was spoken by the Babylonians, Assyrians, and so on. And, um, and Hebrew was the first language of, uh, with, uh, written down with uh, uh, alphabet, okay, but they only had the uh, the consonants, the no vowels. You know, Greek was the first language that has both uh, the consonants and the vowels, and that's why God used the Hebrew and Greek to to, to make the Old and New Testament. Okay, you know, um, alphabetic language is much simpler, easier to learn than the other forms. You know, the, the, the um, pictorial language uh, like the Chinese or the the Egyptians hieroglyphic, they were too complicated. The cuneiform were too complicated. So anyway, uh, the first United Nation, if you might call it, was a group of city-states in the Mesopotamia. That's the origin of uh, humanity. And at that time, uh, they were led by four kings. And uh, the, 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 one of them was named, according to the Bible, Am Raphael, which means Am is a great god. And uh, another form of saying is Ham Rabi, which means Ham is a great thing or a person or something. So uh, Am Raphael is Ham Rabi, and he was a king of Shinar, according to the Bible. He was a king of uh, Babylon, uh, according to secular history. And at that time, he was still a prince. His father was, um, um, uh, oh, what's, what's his name? Uh, something, uh, Sin. He was a worshiper of the Munga Sin, but he, uh, they were the leaders of all nations. And the five kings of the east, uh, uh, four kings of the east, uh, they collected tributes from the the, um, the vassals, and that includes the five kings of uh, of um, Canaan. And uh, after a few years, they decided not to pay the tributes, and they rebelled against their head and their suzerain. And therefore, the four kings of the east launched the first world war. And they came and they conquered the five kings of Canaan and uh, they looted their, they occupied their land, they looted their people to become their own slaves. And uh, they also took their gods, that's, that's their idols. And uh, um, among the people uh, taken from Sodom was a well, Lot and his family. Lot was a, um, a nephew of Abraham, which he, uh, whom he took out of Ur and Haran, thinking that uh, if Abram at that time had no um, part, uh, descendant, no uh, heir, he would adopt Lot at his, as his heir, uh, a potential heir, basically. And later, when Abram went to Egypt, he lied about his wife being his sister, and he's uh, he jacked up the price of uh, uh, bridal price, uh, but the king heard about it. He gave all of the price and really took the wife until he found out she was married, and then he returned her. Uh, the, the bridal price wasn't, re wasn't taken back because it was given to Abram as a damage for his reputation. Then Abram got very rich. So he and Lot became really rich. He had to divide and he let Lot choose the land and Lot chose the land near Sodom. And then Lot 
gradually went into the city of Sodom and lived in the city rather than a shepherd around the city he became maybe a land developer you know a real estate developer in the city he sat in the gate that means he wanted to become an elder of the city so he tried to reform the city's culture okay, at that time they uh, are um, promoting perversion sexual perversions including homosexuality and they used violence to force people and uh, God sent two angels there to verify these two angels were almost raped by the people and then God sent the uh, sulfur from heaven and destroyed that city and but uh, that is uh, after Lot was already taken by these uh, um, four kings of the east and then rescued by Abraham Okay, and, and later, um, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham, giving him a seed from his own body and his wife, and that's Isaac. And, uh, and then after the promise was given, it was the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The reason we mention this is that that was the First World War. Okay? And, uh, and that tells us the law of wars from the most ancient of humanity. Okay. The victors can own the land uh, and the, the people and their gods, that means their idols, but, um, uh, and also to impose their own culture on the, the conquered people. Okay. And uh, the conquered people, their soldiers would be killed and uh, the other people, the non-combatants, would be made into slaves. And that's why slavery existed as a necessary evil from the most ancient of human culture. And uh, uh, in, ca in the case of Israel, since its God has no idol, okay, and God, uh, Jehovah, or the Lord, has no idol, and uh, when Babylon later was raised up to conquer Judah as the rod of wrath of God, to discipline God's own people, and when they had the victory, they um, conquered, um, uh, they took nothing but the, uh, the vessels of the city. Okay, and they, um, uh, uh, because there's no idol, okay, and those vessels were stored up in their own God's, you know, backyard, and there's a storeroom, and the more idols uh, taken from other countries, the greater their own God was viewed, and uh, uh, for Jehovah, of course, was greater than their God, and there's no idol taken, but the vessels were taken there. And later, when Babylon was just about to be conquered by Persia, uh, their king, uh, or their, um, I guess, junior king, uh, Nabonidus, well, Nabonidus was a senior king, the junior king, um, was Belshazzar. He used the vessels from um, Jehovah's temple to drink, and God wrote, you know, sent a hand to write on the wall and to tell them that your day is ended, you're going to die tonight. And, Therefore, he did die. So that was uh, about the laws of wars. Okay, the uh, the victors would take the land, the people, and the gods. Usually, that means the images. If no image, they take the vessels, and they would also impose the culture. So that uh, that tells us this the uh, concept of citizenship before even the nation of Israel existed. That was the world right after the Tower of Babel, and that was the most ancient civilization. Okay, citizenship is to live in a community of people with a, poly, uh, a political entity. Okay, that usually was a city or a union of cities. Uh, and uh, um, they unite on, by a certain land, a certain people with a certain religious belief on a certain God. And, uh, uh, therefore, with that, a certain culture. Okay? So you join the citizenship, that means you also identify with all of the above points. Okay? And there is a privilege of citizenship in the city of God. Okay? After Israel, the people was created through Abraham, and then the, uh, the nation was created through uh, Moses. Okay? And then the state of Israel was created through um, well, Saul, and then basically David, David Solomon. He was a David was a great king of, of um, Israel and Judah. So um, three great people, okay, differ by roughly about 500 years. Abraham, circa 2000 BC. Moses, circa 
1500 BC and David circa 1000 BC. Okay. God created the nation of Israel, uh, or the people of Israel, the nation of Israel, and the state of Israel. Okay. And uh, um, the Israel was a special people in the world. They were called the people of God, or the chosen people. They are chosen people for a phase of the kingdom of God, called the, the visible kingdom. Okay. The kingdom of God has four phases, according to my understanding of the Bible. There was a fuzzy kingdom of God from creation to Abraham. There was a visible kingdom from Abraham to the first coming of Christ. And there's a spiritual kingdom from the first coming to the second coming of Christ. And there's a full kingdom after the <clears throat> second coming of Christ. The full kingdom is both spiritual and visible. Okay, So for Abraham, okay, he, Abraham, Moses, David, they all lived uh, in the age of Israel, uh, the visible kingdom of God. Uh, and uh, uh, for the people who belong, who have a citizenship in the visible kingdom of God, okay, who you may call that city of God, represented by Jerusalem, okay, and, uh, and that's the idea of um, of uh, the great uh, theologian Augustine. Uh, he believed the whole world history can be described by two uh, cities: the city of God and the city of man. Okay, the city of God is Jerusalem; the city of man is Babylon. And uh, it's true, Jerusalem and Babylon all existed at the time of the Tower of Babel. Okay, and uh, um, of course Babylon existed. Uh, it was called uh, Babel and then Babylon. Okay, Babel means uh, confusion and um, uh, called Balal, but originally it was Babylini. That means the, the gate of the gods, the gate to the gods, or gate of heavens, in uh, in Akkadian. So. Uh, Jerusalem at that time was not called Jerusalem yet. You know, Jerusalem means the city of uh, uh, Salem, who had been ruled by Jebusites. So before the Jebusites, were, uh, it was just called Salem, the city of peace. And it was ruled by no other but Melchizedek, whose name means the king of righteousness and was a prototype of Jesus Christ, of course, the, the prince of peace. Okay, so. Both Jerusalem and uh, the uh, and Babylon existed at the time of the city of uh, at the time of Tower of Babel, and uh, they represent two uh, philosophies of life. One is following the well man-made gods. That's Babylon. They worshipped the the constellations. Okay, basically the five. Uh, uh, Planets plus the two major lights, the sun, the moon, and the five planets. Okay. Later, um, the Arabs continued the tradition. They had five, seven false gods, and the chief god was the moon, okay, whose name was Sim. And that was basically the popular religion of uh, the world religion okay, in, the, in Mesopotamia. Okay. It ended up all the way to the time of founding of Islam. Well, Muhammad changed that. He, he rejected all the other gods. He said the chief god, the moon god, said this god, which in Arabic means Al-Ilah, in short, Allah, this god is the true god and all other gods are false. Okay, so uh, polyth from polytheism came a monotheism, but that was not sourced from theism, the biblical theism, okay, which is uh, biblical Judaism, which after Christ turned naturally into Christianity and or a reaction to the to that uh, by rejecting Jesus as the Messiah was Judaism. Okay, so Judaism and the Christianity are theism. Okay, and Islam is the monotheism that came from polytheism. Okay, but anyway, that uh, both of them had their roots at the time of Babel. Okay, the Tower, the Tower of uh, Babel represents the. Uh, the city of Babylon, the city of man, of worshiping man-made gods. Actually, if man can make gods, then who is really God? Uh, a man, you know, worshiping self. Self-worship, therefore, is the idea of humanism, not started from the Tower of Babel. And they may take the form of polytheism or self-worship liberalism today, but they are all the same nature. And the other is worshiping the God of creation, the God of Adam, the God of Noah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and that is a Trinitarian God. The second person was Jesus. The third person was um, 
uh, the Holy Spirit. So that is the the biblical theism. Okay, and uh, that uh, is um, actually that kind of uh, philosophy of life was practiced by the king of Salem, the Prince of Peace, whose name was called, well, um, Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. And he was a type of Jesus, who, who is the king of righteousness and, of course, the Prince of Peace. So there are basically two philosophies of life. Uh, represented by two cities, um, uh, Babylon and uh, the uh, Jerusalem, and uh, that was uh, the two cities or two kingdoms: the kingdom of man and kingdom of God. But the, if you are, if you were in the Old Testament, uh, a Old uh, Testament saint, you are an Israelite. You have a citizenship in the city of God in the state of Israel, in the nation of Israel, in the people of Israel. Okay. And there are privileges for um, being a citizen of this kingdom. Okay. And it was told best, I think, in Psalms 87, 1 to, uh, to 3. Uh, well, 1 to 3, it says, His foundation is uh, in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God, Selah. And then in Psalm 87, 4, it says, I shall mention Rahab uh, um, and Babylon okay, among those who know me. Okay. In the Bible, I was sorry, monster, but actually, where I uh, is, is Egypt is a symbol for Egypt, and Babylon, it's Mesopotamia, it's to the east of uh, Israel. I will mention Rehab and Babylon, that means Egypt and Mesopotamia, or west and east, among those who know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia was born there. Okay, Philistia uh, is uh, uh, the Philistines. They are southwest of uh, Israel, and Tyre are, are uh, residents, um, reside uh, Canaanites. They are to the north of Israel. Ethiopia, they, are, they have uh, Cushites. They are the south of Israel. Basically, to the east, west, north, and south, everywhere in the world, there are people who know Jehovah. Ah, that's uh, so the citizenship of the kingdom of God is open to the people of the whole world, to the people of all races. And the citizenship is um, earned by sovereign divine election. That's what Psalm 87, 5 to 7 said. But of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in her, and the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will count when he registers the people. This one was born there, Selah. Then those who sing as well as those who play the flute shall say, All my springs of joy are in you. Amen. Dear viewers, I thank you for choosing to spend your time with us. And I thank God for giving me the opportunity to serve him by serving you. Truth For Today is the longest running local TV program in West Texas because we have people like you who have a God-given desire to hear the Word of God taught accurately and understandably. Abbey Bible Church was commissioned by God to meet this need. Dr. Joe Temple, Pastor Tim Temple, and I are three generations of pastors from Abilene Bible Church for over 77 years by this day, around July the 4th, 2016. We teach God's Word for the purpose of edifying the church, not only the visible local church that gathers on Sunday morning in our church building, but the universal church, the communion of saints. Truth for Today is our service for the greater communion of saints in our area who cannot go to church services for various reasons. We are here to serve you a full meal of spiritual food 
and our reward is the growth of your faith in God. We are expanding Truth for Today to the Internet now. For those who missed the Sunday lesson and want to catch up, you can go to YouTube and subscribe to the Abilene Bible Church channel. Please remember, your prayer for us is the source of our strength and your financial support keeps us on the air and supplies the workers behind the scene. May God bless you and your beloved. Amen.